Jim Carrey is back with his crazy hair and love of Hawaiian shirts in Ace Ventura when nature calls. Released in 1995 at the height of Jim Carrey mania, this wacky Ace Ventura adventure sees the quirky pet detective retire from his detective duties to become a Tibetan monk after failing to save a raccoon. (coughs) Anyway, but he's lured back and heads out on an African adventure in order to locate a missing bat, where, of course, all your standard Ace Ventura shenanigans take place, giving people exactly what they want when they watch an Ace Ventura movie, with this one being just as enjoyable as its original. However, upon its initial release, its critical reaction was abysmal, all while its audience loved it. So why was Ace Ventura When Nature Calls treated as an undesirable wet fart by the critics, whereas fans saw it as a pinnacle of great Jim Carrey comedy? Well, we may never know the answers, but we're still going to explore 10 things that you didn't know about Ace Ventura When Nature Calls. So let's check it out. Like, as in immediately. Number 10, Reluctant Ventura. So the first Ace Ventura movie, Ace Ventura Pet Detective, was released in February 1994, and it was a surprise hit that no one saw coming, with the movie making just over $107 million on a $15 million budget. So naturally, Morgan Creek Productions and Warner Brothers, who were behind the first movie, were keen to strike while the iron was hot. They wanted to get to work on another Ace Ventura movie. However, lead star Jim Carrey originally really wasn't interested in returning, probably because he had already played the part and wanted to move on to other things. You have to remember, this was Carrey at the height of his career. Not only had he just starred in the original Ace Ventura, but also had massive success with Dumb and Dumber, The Mask, and he had Batman Forever just around the corner. Despite his woes, Carrie had to return thanks to being contractually obliged to do so. So, yep, they had a contract, and no matter what, he was returning to star as Ace Ventura again. But, as Screen Rant pointed out, he got paid $15 million for starring in Ace Ventura 2, which was not only half the movie's budget, but also the same amount of the entire budget of the first movie. Yes, I'm uh, sure that $15 million fee did take some of the sting away from having to star in the movie. I mean, I wouldn't say no to that. (laughs) I'd star in Joel Schumacher's Batman 5, Bat Nipples Returns, if it meant I would get $15 million. Number 9. One director really wanted the job but was turned down. So in the early days of production of Ace Ventura When Nature Calls, director Spike Jones lobbied to get the job of director. But behind the scenes this time round, Jim Carrey had more power and control, and he really didn't want Jones to direct, as he felt that Jones didn't have the required experience. That, and he just simply didn't know him. Now, to be fair, at that point in time, Jones had mainly just directed music videos for acts like Beastie Boys, Bjork, and R.E.M., among many, many more. However, after Ace Ventura When Nature Calls was made, Jones would go on to direct many classic movies like Being John Malkovich, Where the Wild Things Are, and even co-created Jackass. Needless to say, Carrie did regret not hiring Jones to direct When Nature Calls. And when it came to finding a director, Carey supposedly wanted the Farrelly brothers to direct the movie as he had previously worked with them on Dumb and Dumber, but they ultimately didn't think that they were right for the movie. Number 8. The eventual director was fired and then replaced with Carey's friend. 
So the director who was chosen to helm Ace Ventura When Nature Calls was a director called Tom DiCircio. And filming did actually commence with DiCircio in the director's seat while yelling action and shit. However, it seems that Carrie wasn't happy with the way things were going. And so wanting to appease Carrie and to keep him happy, the powers that be behind the production gave him more creative control as to who should direct. So Carrie got rid of DiCircio and swapped him for his friend, Steve Vodekirk, who also served as the movie's writer. Carrie had previously written with Odie Kirk on the TV show In Living Colour, in which Odie Kirk wrote some of his sketches. And in the following years, Odie Kirk would write the scripts for The Nutty Professor and Patch Adams, and would go on to write and direct Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, and Kung Pao Enter the Fist, which he also starred in. Yeah, that's him on the poster there. And it wasn't all bad for replaced director Tom DiCircio, as instead of directing When Nature Calls, he would direct the comedy Celtic Pride. I've never heard of it, but he directed it. Yeah, cool. Number seven, filming location. Despite being an African adventure, most of When Nature Calls was filmed in South Carolina, particularly Botany Bay and Cherokee Plantation as well as further filming in Hondo, Texas, and even some filming taking place in Canada, namely British Columbia. During the filming, Carrie wasn't particularly happy with the script, where while filming, Carrie and director Steve Odenkirk would be changing the script, with Carrie even doing lots of improvising during the shoot. And according to Wikipedia, Carrie sometimes wasn't on set at all, which pushed the filming back and caused delays. Yeah, that must have been pretty annoying for all of those involved, but it gets worse. Number six, one actor really did suffer in Carrie's absence. Now, Screen Rant offers some really interesting information about When Nature Calls in an online article, where it's explained that the reason Carrie took so much time off during the shoot was due to sick leave. Okay, I mean, Carrie needs to be healthy, I guess. However, this is a real sting in the bite, because the reasons of Carrie's sick leave absence were legally listed as an act of God. Then that meant none of the other actors got paid for overtime, and the actor who suffered the most was co-star Simon Callow, who played Vincent Cadby and his contract had expired but he still had to film more scenes of which he wasn't getting paid for and had to constantly be getting flights to and from the set of When Nature Calls to his homeland in the UK which he himself had to pay for. Still the guy did go on to play Charles Dickens in Doctor Who so I guess that's pretty cool. And Ian McNeese who played Fulton Greenwall would also play Winston Churchill in Doctor Who. So yeah double whammy there. I don't know, this whole ordeal just doesn't feel right to me. It's like, come on guys, do the right thing, pay the actors. Number five, an iconic scene happened because Carrie forgot his lines. One of the most iconic moments in When Nature Calls is when Ace is driving to the consulate and starts singing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's so wonderfully random, while being something that Ace Ventura would actually do. Oh, you, pretty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we love you too. Thank you. Everybody go on Chitty Chitty Weedy Pants. Well, originally, Ace wasn't meant to sing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but instead was to have some actual dialogue. But when it came time to film that scene, Harry just ad-libbed the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang song because he forgot his words. Yeah, he couldn't remember what he was meant to say, so, you know, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang it was. And I guess if Carrie is on a roll, you don't yell cut, but you just go with it. Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Bang Bang, bang yeah! There are actually several changes that Carrie wanted to make to the script, as he didn't think it was right that Ace would be terrified of bats, thinking the whole idea was stupid, and really wanted to push for the script to change so Ace Ventura was actually allergic to bats. Number 4, the only sequel Carrie made for 19 years. From several articles and online resources I've read, it seems that Jim Carrey was really not happy while making Ace Ventura when nature calls. In fact, he would supposedly go on to say that he even regretted making the movie. It just seems that he already played Ace Ventura once and was done with the character. You know, he felt kind of been there, done that. In fact, Jim Carrey was so against sequels and reprising characters he already played, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls was the only sequel to one of his previous movies that he would star in. Well, that is until 2014's Dumb and Dumber 2. Yeah, 
a whole 19 years after when nature calls. So, if there's anything to be learned here, it is... Jim Carrey really does not like doing sequels. He has starred in a few sequels, aka Batman Forever and Kick-Ass 2. He doesn't necessarily like doing sequels to his own movies. Number 3. Two Batman villains in the same scene. Another standout moment in Ace Ventura when nature calls is the Monopoly guy scene. Ace Ventura, pet detective, and uh, you must be the Monopoly guy. Where Ace swings around this smarmy, unlikable creep like he's some kind of luxury scarf. I can't explain enough just how much this thing had me in stitches when I was a kid. <laughs> Interestingly, the guy who played the Monopoly Man look-alike was played by an actor called Michael Reed McKay, who starred as Bane in Joel Schumacher's Batman and Robin. Be that Bane before he was given the venom that made him muscular. And as we all know, Jim Carrey played the Riddler in fellow Schumacher Batman movie, Batman Forever. So knowing this now, in a weird way, you're seeing the Riddler using Bane as a luxury item. <laughs> Brilliant. Do not pass go! Do not collect $200! Another hilarious scene is when a hot and sweaty Ace Ventura has to squeeze himself out of his fake mechanical rhinoceros, where a tourist family believe they are watching a rhinoceros giving birth. In the cut of the movie that we all know, Ace's naked ass just pops out and plummets to the ground. However, probably due to TV censors, some TV versions had an alternative cut, where instead of seeing a naked Ace Ventura, we saw this. Man, was I lost! Woo! And, as someone pointed out in the comments section, just where on earth did Ace get a giant mechanical rhinoceros from? Why is no one questioning that? Number 2. Failed Sequel so as mentioned, Ace Ventura When Nature Calls wasn't exactly a project Jim Carrey had much love for. As the 90s and 2000s went on, Morgan Creek and Warner Brothers would ask Carrey to return to star as Ace Ventura for a third time. Several times. But he kept saying no. So I guess they finally thought, we aren't going to get Jim Carrey back anytime soon. So they made one without him, which led to the widely despised Ace Ventura Jr. Which now focused on a kid playing the Ace Ventura part. And it was pretty terrible, and is often considered a contender for one of the worst sequels of all time. So that right there should have been the end of it. Well, no, as in 2021, there were rumours that a new Ace Ventura movie was in development, and it was being spearheaded by the guys behind the Sonic movie. Jim Carrey sarcastically said that he'll do a third Ace Ventura movie if Christopher Nolan directs it, which obviously is a joke. But he then posted a picture of Ace Ventura on his Instagram, writing, quote, more than ready for the next chapter. So, you know, like, yeah, who knows what's going on? My god, man, make up your mind! Are you going to do the sequel or not? Number one, a massive hit despite the critics hating on it. Ace Ventura When Nature Calls was released in November 1995, and it was a massive financial success, as it made $212.4 million on a $30 million budget, with its box office intake nearly doubling the original movie's box office intake. Something that I think would have really pissed off the critics, as they hated the movie. Yeah, there was definitely no love here. When Nature Calls currently has 21% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it got nominated for a Razzie for Worst Sequel or Remake, and won two Stinker Bad Movie Awards for Most Painfully Unfunny Comedy and Worst Sequel. And I caramba! What exactly did Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, do to really piss off the critical elite? Did they think the movie would be offensive to those who look like the Monopoly Man? Well, I'm not offended. And the Rotten Tomatoes consensus even says, quote, Nature calls in this Ace Ventura sequel, and it's answered by the law of diminishing returns. Um, did you guys see how much the movie made in the box office? It was a hit. What's all this diminishing returns nonsense? Regardless, it's just a fun, silly, wacky comedy to a movie that was itself a fun, silly, wacky comedy. 
Despite all the naysaying the movie faced at the time, When Nature Calls has gone on to be an enjoyed part of the Ace Ventura experience, with both movies standing side by side as two iconic Jim Carrey movies of the 90s, when he was at the height of his powers. Yes, it's a silly movie, but that's kind of the idea. It's it's meant to be. You don't watch an Ace Ventura movie expecting to see Remains of the Day. And for what the movie is, it is a lot of fun. And if you're a Jim Carrey fan, then it's bound to make you chuckle throughout. When I made a video about the first Ace Ventura movie, I didn't particularly say nice things about When Nature Calls, and I can only put that down to having it engraved into my head that the movie is no good because of all the naysaying. See that? See how the popular opinion trope spreads? But anyway, if you love the first movie, then you will find a lot to love in When Nature Calls. Anyway, I'm Minty, and I really want to get the Lego set of Ace Ventura pushing himself out of the rhino's butt. <laughs> I mean, come on, who wouldn't want that on display? Mm. See ya!